In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to create a mirror and a mirror material in 3D Studio Max and V-Ray. And you can see here what our final result is going to look like. We've got just your basic wood frame and it's got a nice beveled piece of glass over top a uh, mirror material back in there. It's reflecting everything nicely. So I'm going to create everything from scratch. I'm going to hide some of this stuff and I'll tell you what that's about later. So our first step is to just create a rectangle. We're going to do 48 by 36, which is a pretty standard size for a mirror. I'm going to drop that down to where I had it framed earlier. I'm going to add an edit poly modifier on top of that. And then we're going to create the frame by using the inset tool two inches. We're going to detach that middle, which is going to end up being our mirror eventually. We're going to add a shell modifier for two inches to give that some width. Create a wood material. So what I've got here is just a basic V-Ray material with a wood uh, texture in the diffuse slot. And this is a cathedral brown walnut. And it is tileable. Uh, horizontally and vertically, which makes it very friendly to work with. So I'm going to apply that there. I'm going to drop into sub-object mode real quick just to make sure the grain direction is somewhat realistic. And if you would like to learn more about this technique of UV mapping, uh, check out the link in the description where I, we have a tutorial that covers sub-object UV mapping. It's a really great way to avoid having to unwrap things in certain situations. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Our inner part here that's going to be a mirror is actually going to be three objects. And this first piece is going to be a what I'm going to call a back panel. And this is going to be the same material that the frame is. And what this is going to do is to reflect the same general color tones as the mirror, it's uh, the frame of the mirror, just to keep things nice and tidy. And in the real world, most mirrors also have a back panel that's either of the same grain or for a cheaper mirror, it's usually just like a flat matte black. The first thing we want to do with this is we're going to add a shell modifier. We're going to make it a sixteenth of an inch thick, just to give it a little bit of thickness. And the next object that we want to create is our actual mirror. And we want to snap that by pressing the S key. We're going to drag that flush with the front of our back panel. And now we're going to create a mirror material. In your diffuse channel, you want just a solid black. In the reflect slot, you want a 255 white. And you want to turn your Fresnel reflections off. So this is what that's going to look like. Uh, we've got glossiness is 1.0. We're not going to do anything weird there. We're going to go ahead and apply that. And now what I like to do is I drop an edit poly on it, select all the faces and just hit tessellate once. And what that does is give you a nice line there in the middle. So you can always, worst case scenario, you can tap your edged faces on and you can realize that there is in fact an object right there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our glass material. I'm just duplicating and what I want to do is select these four faces. I'm going to bevel those. I'm going to add a, another sixteenth of an inch and then I'm going to drop that in an inch and a quarter. And for any of those unfamiliar with the bevel command, it gives you just sort of a nice diagonal edge. So to get that, I'm going to create a quick glass material. And in the diffuse slot, we're going to go completely white. In the reflect slot, we're going to go completely white. I'm going to leave Fresnel reflections on, but I am going to disconnect the IOR and I'm going to put that at about a 2.5. And you can see now we've got just this solid white reflective object. So what you're going to do next is drop into your refract options and make that completely white as well. If you do anything between white or black, you get an opaque effect. And what that does is mostly just has an impact on your render times. 
So unless you have a specific reason to do that, I suggest you leave it at a 255. In the reflect options, we're gonna turn the max depth to an eight. And that's gonna give us a little bit more pop. Now what I like to do is just group all this together. I'm gonna call it mirror. I'm ready to see what this looks like. And real quick, I'm gonna show you just the basic scene that I have set up around this so you can understand what's going on in the rendering. I've got a physical camera, just a basic V-Ray dome light, and I've got a plane back here. This just has a picture of the Caudex bedroom collection from the render node catalog. And that's just to give our mirror something to reflect other than a plain white background. So let's hit render and see what happens. And as you can see, we've got some issues here. So the reflection seems a bit dark. It's got all this weird noise banding, these diagonal lines, all these strange moiré effects. That's actually a really simple problem, or I should say simple to solve. So I'm gonna drop into this mirror group. And the cause of all this is that the back face of the glass is occupying the same space as the front face of the mirror material. And to solve that, all you have to do is separate them a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I mean just as little as you can imagine. When we hit render, that should be gone. And as you can see, our reflection is now nice and crisp. Uh, there's none of that noise and there's none of the darkness at the top. You can see where the beveled edge comes in, adds a nice effect, breaks up any edges leading into it. You can't see it here, but it catches a little bit of the highlight from the V-Ray dome light overhead. And that's how you create a mirror and mirror materials in 3D Studio Max and V-Ray.